dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, it's 631. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Cassidy Strickland. Hope your morning's off to a great start. It's off to a great start for some school kids this mm -hmm. morning, I'm sure, because they got to go back to bed. Yeah, a lot of closings or delays. Mm -hmm. So look at the bottom of the screen or head to WYMT.com to see what schools are in, what schools are out, and what schools mm -hmm. are a little bit delayed this morning. Brandon's got a breakdown of why those schools are delayed or out of session today. And so, Brandon, you're finally starting to see that predicted snow come down. Probably not as much as we were thinking it's going to be, but nonetheless, it's finally starting to somewhat check out. Right. And again, we're cautioning people if you're hitting the roads this morning, be extra careful. You're dealing with lots of issues. Let's talk about them as we get into the camera network. First, we start with McKee this morning, and you can see snow on the rooftops there. So a little light accumulation over in Jackson County, I-64 at Moorhead, starting to see some there on the grass and a little bit there in the grassy median, maybe on the sides of the roads there with the rumble strips. Here in Hazard, still coming down, can't really tell it on this camera, but it is snowing outside of our studios. Whitesburg, don't see anything on the rooftops just yet, may still be a little bit of a wintry mix over that way, but temperatures are getting colder, so I'd say it's probably an icy mix or some snow at this point. Here's the last six hours. If all of that rain could have happened while the temperatures were dropping, we could have seen uh, quite a bit of snow in some areas, but but again, that one little band off to the west is trying to expand just a little bit, and that's what's bringing us what we're seeing right now. Live pinpoint Doppler radar, still some mixing going on over toward Pikeville. We're going to continue to watch that for a little while. So here's some of the concerns. Falling temperatures, that's going to make for slick roads that will drop our road temperatures fast. Even though we were in the 60s yesterday, that will drop the road temperatures fast. Are in the upper 20s, out toward Lake Cumberland, 30s for the rest of us. When you factor in the wind chill, it feels like the teens out toward Lake Cumberland and 20s everywhere else for the most part. Visibility is rough. So keep that in mind if you're traveling this morning. Low visibility with blowing snow and with some fog. So just be careful. Forecast continues to fall with temperatures. The precip ends later this morning. Sun and clouds later today. And then we see the chance for some flurries overnight with a cold night ahead as temperatures drop again into the upper teens. I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Sounds good, Brandon. We'll be right back with you. Well, a gunman opened fire inside of a central Florida bank, killing five people. It happened at a bank in Sebring, Florida. Police have identified the suspect as 21-year-old Zephin Xavier. Police say crisis negotiators were talking to Xavier when they moved in. I ordered or asked the sheriff to send in the tactical unit or their SWAT team in an attempt to recover potential victims and take the subject into custody. Investigators have still offered no motive for Wednesday's mass shooting, making the circumstances that much harder to comprehend. Xaver is in the Highlands County Jail awaiting his first appearance in front of a judge this morning. Well, President Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, is postponing his congressional testimony. The reason, according to Cohen, is ongoing death threats made against his family. Cohen had been scheduled to testify publicly before the House Oversight Committee on February 7th. His attorney said in a statement that threats were made against Cohen and his family as recently as this weekend. Well, the partial government shutdown is now entering its 34th day. President Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are now on the same page on at least one thing related to the shutdown, but it's not something that will help put an end to the stalemate. CBS's Mark Liverman explains. Both sides agree there will be no State of the Union address until the longest government shutdown in history comes to an end. Because government is closed. Yesterday afternoon, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi revoked the president's invitation to address Congress next week. She doesn't want the American public to hear what's going on. And she's afraid of the truth. The president eventually yielded to the speaker. In a pair of late night tweets, he wrote, this is her prerogative. I look forward to giving a great State of the Union address in the near future. A deal is on the table. Today, the Senate will hold two votes to reopen the government, but both appear doomed to fail. The Republican measure includes $5.7 billion for a border wall. The Democratic proposal opens the government through February 8th, but without the president's wall money. furloughed federal workers cascaded on Capitol Hill in protest. They're going to miss a second paycheck tomorrow. 
It's frustrating. It's angering. It's Colette Hall is the wife of an air traffic controller in Las Vegas. I have quite a few things I'd like to say to the government, to the president, and to anyone listening on either side. This has absolutely got to end because you're causing a lot of suffering. She's not alone. A CBS News poll finds six in 10 Americans say the government shutdown is causing serious problems for the country. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now that CBS News poll also found seven in 10 Americans do not believe that funding a border wall is worth the government shutdown. Meanwhile, Southwest Airlines is showing appreciation to TSA employees working without pay in Oakland, California. The air carrier treated them to a barbecue. TSA workers have not seen paychecks for weeks because of the shutdown. The barbecue was originally planned to honor Southwest co-founder Herb Keller, who recently passed away. But the airline then invited TSA workers, saying that this is the kind of gesture that Keller believed in. What better way to celebrate than to show our appreciation not only to our employees, but to the TSA who works very hard for us on a daily basis. Others are also offering a helping hand to TSA workers at Oakland International. Last week, a local food bank donated meals for them. The airport itself set up a computer room that they can use to apply for unemployment benefits. Meanwhile, federal workers called on Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to push through a bill to reopen the government. They also tried to take a letter into his office. They chanted in the building's lobby for several minutes before law enforcement stepped in. Well, students at Covington Catholic High School in northern Kentucky were cleared to return to class yesterday. Threats had been directed at the school since a controversial video became viral. In a short clip, it appeared that students from the school were blocking the path of Native American elder Nathan Phillips while mocking him in Washington, D.C. Now, longer video was later made available that showed the students were the target of some derogatory comments from another group. Senator Mitch McConnell talked about the situation yesterday. Sadly, this kind of fact-free rush to judgment is becoming an all too often occurrence. So if we can learn anything from this weekend, here's what I hope it is. When the rush for headlines takes precedence over the facts, mistakes are made and our rights as Americans are put at risk. This trend is particularly troubling when young people are involved. House intelligent lawmakers are asking Twitter about how the initial video came to be so widely viewed. Now, the Roman Catholic Diocese of Covington, Kentucky, was evacuated yesterday after reports of a suspicious package. Emergency crews and a bomb squad responded. Diocese officials say they received several packages Wednesday, deeming one of them to be suspicious. The incident is thought to be in, connect, in connection to the incident in Washington. A county official says the school has received hundreds of threats since the weekend. The White House says it has reached out to the Covington Catholic students and has not ruled out inviting them to D.C. Meanwhile, a white supremacist pleaded guilty to murder in New York yesterday. James Jackson admitted to fatally stabbing Timothy Kaufman on March 2017 because he was black. After his arrest, Jackson said he came to New York City for that reason specifically and attacked the 66-year-old who was alone on a dark road. Jackson said he wanted to start a race war and encouraged other white men to kill black men. Well, back in Kentucky, State Representative Rocky Atkins is expected to officially file his candidacy for governor today. This comes months after he launched his campaign. The Democratic leader and former Jefferson County School Board member Stephanie Horn will file for governor and lieutenant governor. Atkins first announced his plans to run back in November. Attorney General Andy Bashir and former State Auditor Adam Edlin have also announced their campaigns on the Democrat side. Meanwhile, a former Miss America has announced that she is entering the race for Kentucky Secretary of State. Heather French Henry filed financial paperwork to begin raising money for a statewide campaign. The Democrat previously served as Commissioner of Veterans Affairs under former Governor Steve Bashir. Jason Griffith of Whitesburg and Jeff Sebesta have said that they will also be entering the Democratic primary. Three Republicans have also put their name into the GOP primary.